in this video we're going to delve a bit deeper into the export phase. So the first thing that will happen is that the VCSA shell will switch to bash from the appliance shell. So if you look in the upgrade export.log on the VCSA, you'll see executing export phase. So this is it, it beginning. And we can see then in the lines after that, that we're switching the shell from appliance shell to the bash shell. Then the SSH daemon is started on the VCSA so that it can accept SCP connections. And the last thing that we see in the upgrade export log is the export starting. Now, the, this log won't tell us more detail on the actual export itself, so we'll have to go to the migration assistant.log where we can see some more information about the export beginning, and we can see their export is running. So it's the start of the execution process and the export has begun running. Now, the export process happens sequentially for all the various components. So everything from VUM to the vCenter database, SSO, SPS, etc., all the way down through the various services on a vCenter server. This list on, on screen is taken from a vCenter with an embedded PSC. If this was a, an external PSC, the number of services would be less. And similarly, if it was a, a vCenter that uses an external PSC, the number would also be less. But this would be the total amount of services on a vCenter with an embedded PSC. So each component has its own ex export log, and these can be found then in var log VM or upgrade. Similarly to the collect requirements log, there's one for each of the various services uh, for components that get data exported. So if an export fails at any particular time, it'll fail at a certain component and you would go to the particular component that failed to investigate why. So we'll take a look at one example. We're not gonna step through every single component's export, the example we've chosen here is the export of the vCenter database information. So we're looking at the export com VMware vcdb.log. The first thing that happens for this export process is that the VDCS service is stopped. So this is the content library service. That's a service that would interact with the vCenter database. So we see here that the v VDCS service is stopped. The next service that's stopped then is the VPXD service. So both those services interact with the vCenter database. So in order to ensure that we export the data correctly, we need to make sure that those services are stopped. So the VPXD service is then stopped. Then we detect what database type uh, via the DSN. So we check the database type. In this example, it's Postgres, it's embedded, and we get the DSN information. If it is an embedded vPostgres database, we then ensure that that service is running. If this was a, a vCenter with an external Microsoft SQL or Oracle database, we don't really have control of starting or stopping those services. So it would be up to the end user to make sure that those services are running. We'll then configure the vCDB export path and we'll move on to the next section. So we'll then calculate the estimated export times. Again, this is a rough example depending on the size of the database. We see very small times here, like one minute, two megs, et cetera, because this is a very small environment. In a real world environment, these times would be larger. And then we begin the export of the database contents. In this example, again, because it is an embedded vPostgres running on a Windows vCenter, we use pgdump to export the data. Um, it would be a different process if it's running an Oracle or a SQL database. Once the export is complete, we should see in the migration assistant.log, the export finished successfully without any errors. And then we would move on to the, to the next section. So look for the keywords success or export finished. So that summarizes the export phase, a little bit deeper looking through the logs. And we also looked at an example of exporting the vCenter database information. In the next section, we'll take a look at the transfer phase where it's just copying the data up to the target vCenter server appliance. I hope you enjoyed this video.